we have now been officially notified that the Secretary General has been unable to obtain a reply from the government of France regarding arrangements for a United Nations presence before and a United Nations supervision during the holding of the referendum in French Somaliland. Mr. Chairman, less than two weeks separate us from the referendum to be held on Sunday, the 19th of March. This committee, because of its mandate, is one of the most important bodies of the World Organization. I am certain that it will not shrink from its responsibilities towards a territory which is relatively small in comparison with its neighbors, but which merits its attention no less than any other land or any other people. One of the petitioners, Mr. Abdurrahman Ahmed Hassan, who had himself been politically detained in a prison in French Somaliland from 1959 to 1965, testified before the committee on 6 October 1966 that in the two months following President de Gaulle's visit to Djibouti last August, over 3,000 persons had been arrested. Another petitioner, Mr. Dahan, reiterated the complaints about political suppression, including the absence of effective trade unions and of freedom of action for political parties, youth organizations, and women's organizations. Mr. Chairman, unfortunately, the harsh policies described by the petitioners early in October 1966 before this committee continue to be applied by the French authorities in the territory even during the remainder of the 21st session of the General Assembly. On 9th December, the Somali delegate advised the 4th Committee of the General Assembly that between August and November 1966, almost 6,000 6, men, women and children, almost all destitute, had come from the territory into the Somali Republic. Since November, the number has increased to more than 8,000. The greater majority had been arbitrarily expelled by the police, while some had felt compelled to cross the border for fear of persecution in the territory. This is a serious situation and a grave indictment against the policies of the local French colonial administration. The vast majority of the expellees are bona fide citizens of the territory. Many of them were in possession of their identity papers at the time of their expulsion, while others were not even allowed time to go to their homes to fetch their documents. From the statements given by them and by the evidence of their political leaders, it appears that the expulsions have taken place for the purpose of political intimidation and because the local authorities believe these persons would have voted no at the forthcoming referendum. In addition to the political injustice of the situation, there is the question of the well-being of these unfortunate refugees. Their problem is so serious that the Somali government has been obliged to call on international humanitarian organizations, including the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees, for assistance in providing the means of existence for them. My government has made several representations on the matter to the French government, but there has been no satisfactory response. 